Well, Elon Musk and Ron DeSantis have just teamed up to put the final dagger in a storyline that the mainstream media dare not touch. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the fact that right now, both Ron DeSantis and Elon Musk are literally making liberal heads, well, explode. I have not seen this much panic from lib liberals ever since President Trump uh, got elected. But today there is a lot of liberal tears and crying going on all across the country. And it's not only being caused by Elon Musk and DeSantis. I've got so many victories that I want to show you today because so many times, you know, news can be negative. But today I've got victory after victory after victory that you absolutely need to see. Let's start first with Elon Musk. Well, as you know, uh, earlier, just a few days ago, he bought some stake in Twitter. Here it is. Bloomberg, Elon Musk takes 9.2% stake in Twitter after hinting at a shakeup. We all know that um, Elon Musk has been very critical about free speech there on Twitter in support of free speech. So, so this was a major move from Elon Musk. And then this happened just a couple days later. And this is fortune.com. Musk turned down a seat on Twitter's board, leaving the door open for him to pursue, and I love it, a hostile takeover, which is exactly what he did. And here we have the episode times Elon Musk offers to buy Twitter and unlock its potential for free speech and of course he offered to buy it way more than it was worth at 43 billion dollars and in his letter uh, or, or notification if you will uh, to Twitter here's what he had to say at the very end of it which is really ticking off a lot of liberals he says this is my best and final offer of 43 million and if it is not accepted I would need to reconsider my position as a shareholder in other words, he's kind of got him by the balls, if you will, saying that, hey, if you don't want to take my really good offer, uh, which is estimated or it's around 43 billion estimated, but it's 54.20 per share is, is the actual estimate. But he says, if you don't want to take that, then I might have to reconsider what I do with my shares, you know, like possibly sell the shares, crash the company, and then it goes to, well, really low numbers. Either way, he's got a lot of liberals freaking out as the board is considering. I know some board members have said, we're not going to do that unless you pay more. Well, others are still considering. Here it is. Twitter, and this is on Fox News. Twitter leftists lose it after Elon Musk offers to buy the social media giant. I'm frightened. I'm afraid. Here's some of the liberal freakouts here. Take a look. Max Boot. I am frightened. Oh, my gosh. By the impact on society and politics. If Elon Musk acquires Twitter, he seems to believe that on social media, anything goes. <laughs> OK, for democracy to survive, we need more content, moderation, not less. Excuse me. This guy is literally vouching for Chinese style censorship. And he's afraid that Elon Musk might allow conservatives to speak. What an idiot. <laughs> here we have another one here. If Elon Musk is successful in purchasing Twitter, it will result in World War III and the destruction of our planet. I mean, is he for real? <laughs> why, why do they care so much? Why do they care so much? You know why. I know why. Here's another one, Robert Reich. And here's what he said earlier this year. He said, anyone who is saying Twitter's ban violates the First Amendment doesn't know Twitter is a private company. And the First Amendment protects individuals against government. Okay. Right, Robert Reich. Then he goes and tweets after, you know, Elon Musk is going to bite. Here's what he says. What could possibly go wrong with an oligarch determining what constitutes? Are you against or for it being a private platform? Because you're kind of contradicting yourself here. And probably the biggest one is what Business Insider, here's what they stated back in August of 2013. They tweet this out. Billionaire Jeff Bezos, Washington Post buy, marks a fascinating culture transition in America. So here they are saying, good job, Jeff Bezos, for buying all of Washington Post. We love you. It's fascinating. And then fast forward to 2022. Elon Musk, another billionaire, attempt to buy Twitter represents a chilling new threat. Billionaire trolls are taking over social media. Do you see the hypocrisy in that? <laughs> so if liberal lunatic Jeff Bezos does it, it's okay. But if Elon Musk does it, it's not okay. I can't even tell you how many liberals are on Twitter right now, uh, just completely contradicting everything they said in the past. And now they're like, we need to stop billionaires from buying up things and, and, and all of that. You know, that needs to stop. Wait a minute. <laughs> That happens a lot in the liberal world, but yet when we do it, some libertarian or conservatives, uh-oh, 
We can't have that. They are so freaked out right now. I hope he buys that more stuff. Not only that, but DeSantis has been sending liberals in a panic for quite some time, especially his whole thing with Disney there. Here we have it, and this is on theguardian.com. DeSantis talks on, uh, DeSantis takes on Disney in latest battle in the Republican culture war. Florida's governor is unhappy that Disney has opposed his don't say gay bill, and it is threatening to revoke its privileges. Now, let's just be clear here. There is no such thing as a don't get, say gay bill. It's not even in the verbiage. These liberals haven't even read it. What's in the bill is the fact that he doesn't want, and parents don't want, kindergarteners through third grades taught gender identity politics. They're freaking third graders and first and second in kindergartens for crying out loud. And Disney takes a stance against this and says, yes, we want that. Uh, what, what? Excuse me? So what does DeSantis do? He says, we're going to revoke your privileges. You will no longer have the right to self-govern. Maybe we should look into that. They're going to look into doing that. And I say, get them DeSantis because parents are now upset. And basically, this is bolstering Ron DeSantis uh, standing with the GOP. DeSantis versus Disney showdown. Bolsters Florida's governor standing in GOP. And here's his latest move, ticking off a few liberals there. CBS News, 15-week abortion ban becomes Florida's law with Governor Ron DeSantis' signature. So that's obviously sending a lot more liberals in a panic. But you know what else? is sending liberals in a little bit of a panic, especially with this midterm election coming up and future elections uh, in 2024. Well, the fact that Zuckerberg won't be donating his 300 some odd millions of dollars like he did in the election with Biden and President Trump. Uh Uh-oh, take a look here. Foxnews.com. Zuckerberg's millions of dollars won't be part of the midterm elections. Says, you know what? It was just a one-time thing. And take a look here. Zuckerberg and Chan donated at least $350 million to the nonprofit Center for Technology and Civil Civic Life ahead of the 2020 election, which was distributed to local election offices. The nonprofit said that this year it will instead launch a different program dubbed to the U.S. Alliance for Election Excellence. The program is an $80 million, right? five-year effort intended to create a network for the nation's thousands of local election officials who could apply for aid and improve their technology and processes, the AP reported. Uh Uh-oh. You know why I think Zuckerberg did that and pulled out all those money? Well, because the states were fighting back and started banning it. Here we have Bloomberg. Zuckerberg's election aid spurs GOP drive in 30 states to ban it. And in fact, many states have banned it already. (laughs) Yay, Arizona, I believe, being one of those, if not in the process of banning it. Sorry, Zuckerberg. Can't do that again this year. Liberal tears just falling out all over the place. But you know what else liberal tears are falling falling out over? The fact that their mainstream media is not getting as much attention as it's as it used to. You know, CNN's failing numbers. Take a look at Forbes.com, who actually admits it. Fox News gains as CNN and MSNBC drop significantly in February cable news ratings. Not only that, here's another one here in Breitbart, and this is almost laughable. CNN paid $300 million to attract fewer than 10,000 10, daily viewers. Nobody cares, CNN. Nobody likes you and they're hurting so bad that cnn cuts coming or big cuts coming for cnn after a slow start says axios bye bye cut 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 those numbers cnn you know what else is coming out that liberals don't like how about the information on blm take a look here Intelligencer, Black Lives Matter secretly bought $6 million house allies and critics alike have questioned where the organization's money has gone you mean uh, they're a little bit upset about, you know, $6 million being hid by BLM. Uh-oh. The organization that all liberal leftists supported, and it didn't matter if they burned down cities or not, they were all in avid support. But now this, on top of the burning of our cities, what else are they mad about? Well, the Hunter Biden or um, Joe Biden's son information that has been leaking out as well. Throw that in there. And not just that, but the poor approval ratings. They're crying over this by Joe Biden. Take a look here. And this is on Mediaite. New poll. Biden approval at a dismal 
33% and 26% among Hispanics. This is a huge blow to the Democratic Party who often boasts of the minority vote of all minorities. And now Hispanics are jumping ship. You know what, Joe Biden? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not sorry. I'm really not sorry. You want to know? You deserve it. After massive inflation, getting us involved, uh, you know, or, or, or sparking a war under your presidency, destroying our country, pushing these green policies in the whole nine yards. I don't have a cheer, sheer tear to shed. Who I am shedding tears over is the American people who are struggling because of your policies. But